<laughs> Today on Houston Life, we are kicking off Black History Month with a look inside Houston's African American Library at the Gregory School. Find out what's being done there to preserve important moments in time while promoting a brighter future. Plus, February is Heart Health Month. Learn how you can help bring awareness and give back to the American Heart Association. Then, to celebrate the start of the Lunar New Year, we'll have a special performance from a local group taking lion dancing to the next level. Also, we'll have a fun and safe way to get your dog some exercise. We're getting a look inside Run Fido Run, the first mobile dog gym in Houston. Check that out. We'll learn more coming up today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2, Houston Life starts now. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to Houston Life. Can you believe it, Keith Garvin? It is February 1st already. I know. Oh, goodness. It just uh, These last two years really have been flying by in these last few months, last few days. Like, it was, seems like it was Christmas, like, you know, last week. I know, right? Goodness. And just before today's show, I was telling you, I feel like I need 20 more minutes. 20 more minutes. <laughs> I feel like I need another month, yes. maybe another year, right? That would be nice to catch up, take an extra nap or two, you know, yeah, just have some time to yourself. It's gone by so fast. Good I gracious. know. Yeah. We, it, time goes by faster as we get older. Uh, thanks for filling in for yeah. Courtney today for a bit. Quick Courtney update, by the way, because yes. we've been on the phone every single day. <laughs> She's feeling a whole lot better. Yeah. She's just waiting to get a negative COVID Thank test. Goodness. She still tested positive this morning, so knock on wood, fingers crossed, she'll be back here any yeah. moment. So many of us have gone through that. I remember it was a year ago I had COVID. I only had symptoms for like four days but I was away from work for three weeks because I couldn't get a, a negative test. Oh, yeah, you know? we won't let you back in the building. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. They're, they're serious about that COVID stuff around here, you know, <laughs> yeah. but uh, as they should be. But yes, yeah, so I, I know the feeling and, you know, you feel like you just, you can just run a mile. You know, yeah. I had a Peloton. I was doing Peloton in my room, but I oh, couldn't good. leave the house or come back to work because I couldn't pass a, a test. Yeah, well, I think Courtney's going a little stir crazy at home, trying on a bunch <laughs> of shoes. So, Courtney, <laughs> hang in there. We love you. We miss yes, you. Uh, hey, happy National Freedom Day. This this yes. is also, of course, the start of Black History Month. Uh -huh. And National Freedom Day is, of course, the day when Abraham Lincoln, back on February 1st, 1865, mm -hmm. he signed the resolution that eventually would end slavery. Yeah, the 13th it Amendment. It became known as the 13th Amendment right. once the states ratified it. So happy National Freedom Day. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a, a Black History Day, which, which February 1st, which turned into Black History Month, which we celebrate now. So, yeah, totally awesome. Yeah. Yes. Also, Big day. Lunar New Year. Yeah, oh, the lion dance is coming up. It's I can't coming up. Wait. You guys are in for such a treat. We have a really talented group in our lobby. They're going to be performing for us live later on in today's show. I live not far from the Teen Hao Taoist Temple, ah. and I, I made a stop this morning. Uh -huh. It was packed, and oh, people were dressed in their, in their New Year's best. So we're going to have more on both of those topics and also where you can celebrate. There is an article, click to Houston.com, if you're looking for ways to celebrate the Lunar yeah. New Year today. Yeah, lo looking forward to that. That is fun. They were warming up, and we heard them in the lobby. A lot of folks didn't know that they were there yet. And, you know, you're at your computer, you just hear, hear the banging and the drums and everything yeah. else. It, uh, it catches your attention for sure. Yeah, but we does. are excited for that performance. I was upstairs sure. on the back of the building, and I could hear it. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sure every zip code around here could hear it. Without a doubt. Okay, we got to talk about Tom Brady. Man, the GOAT. Yeah. I mean, without a doubt, yeah, I think greatest quarterback ever. And, and that pains me because I, I was never a Patriots fan. But, Tom, I mean, you can't help but be a Tom Brady fan. I mean, he's a winner. I mean, without a doubt. He's were a you were you just not a Patriots fan, or did you actually loathe the Patriots like so many people did? Uh, there was a lot of loathing involved okay. as well, okay. yes. Yeah, a li little bit of loathing involved. But, uh, you know, hey, but how can you not like Tom Brady? I mean, 22 years. Yeah. I mean, he's, what, 44 years old. To be yeah. able to play this long at, at the highest level level, you know, is just amazing. So hats off. I mean, he's without a doubt the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. And it was hard for me to say that for a number of years <laughs> because he was with the Patriots. But 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 since then, his last two years. Once he went to Tampa Bay, you were OK. I with was that? like, yeah, OK, I can acknowledge it now. Yes. OK, <laughs> but well, yeah, fantastic career. And the news about his retirement had kind of leaked over the weekend yeah. on social media. I mean, uh -huh. people were buzzing about this. So after days of speculation, he finally made this announcement on social media. This is today. It's actually kind of a, a beautiful statement. You can see at the bottom of the screen. This is difficult for me to write. Here it goes. I'm not going to make that competitive commitment anymore. Mm. Essentially, he's moving his time and energy onto other things that require his attention. Of course, he's married to Gis Giselle Bunchen. Yeah. Uh, he, he's like an 80% vegan, which yeah. I think is also known as a flex. 
flexitarian. Uh, <laughs> okay. But he's in top athletic shape, eating mostly a plant-based diet. I mean, he's yeah. certainly, as you mentioned, greatest of all time, certainly greatest in league history. Yeah, you know, one thing you notice, um, so if, if you read the statement, so he, he, he spent 20 years with the Patriots, you know, set, yeah. you know, six Super Bowls with them. Through deflate gate and all. All that, yeah, all that stuff. And um, he didn't mention the Patriots at all. He oh. mentioned the Bucks like six or seven. <laughs> the Bucks fans, the the coaches, and and he never mentioned. So I, I wonder if there was a you know a little bit of a, you know issue still there with the Patriots. You know, great career. I don't know exactly how he ended or why it ended the way it did, but it's just interesting that he he didn't make one mention of New England or even New, the Patriot fans. It is a very very good point since yeah. he did spend the bulk of his career. Slight oversight, but maybe not <laughs> since it was in writing. Right? Yeah, true, yeah. Well, maybe, maybe there will be an addendum. Who knows? You know. Like, hey, by the way, I forgot to mention you guys yeah, too. Right? Sorry. <laughs> like the people accepting their Oscars, and they forget to thank their mom or the uh -huh. director of the film. Yeah. Hey, so I asked you something right before the show. I, I couldn't believe your response. <laughs> you don't play Wordle? I, I'm so I, I play Wordscape. I, I've heard. I know Wordscape. I, I don't know Wordle. I, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with me. Listen, yeah. you're about to thank me for this news <laughs> because I, so I'm so horrified you don't play Wordle. I didn't play it until a couple days ago, right? I oh, heard about okay. it from Brandon, our friends Natalie and Joel. Everybody is playing Wordle, so right? So you're a newbie as well. I'm a newbie. So yeah. it's a puzzle that you essentially play. Here's here's essentially, well, these are the instructions we're seeing on the screen. But uh -huh. if we were to get rid of that little X mark there, yeah. there you go. See this? You have essentially six tries to guess a five-letter word. Oh. So, like, there's that yellow O. Uh -huh. That means that those two letters are in the, in the ultimate winning word. They're okay. just in the wrong place. Anyway, go online check it out. It takes a minute to get the hang of it. Okay. Yesterday, big news, Keith broke. Yes. New York Times bought Wordle. That's okay, that's big. From the dude who invented it. Oh, okay, so he's having a good day today. Yeah, there's wow. only one Wordle a day. I think I already said that, but wow. check it out online. There's even a t Taylor Swift version, which is called Taylordle. Well, okay, all right. And there's even a less uh, work safe version <laughs> called Swerdle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> NSFW, is that, yeah, is that, yeah, that's right, yeah, not safe for work, yeah. But instead of five letters, you only get four on four. that one. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't but, but played he's it. He's here all week, folks. I just heard it's a th I'm, I'm serious. This, yes. It's a thing. Wow. So check okay. out Wordle. Keep yeah. and thank me later. You're going to okay. love it. Okay, Wordle. And you know, one, one a day. One a day. So okay. once you solve it. But here's the thing, though. Thank you for everyone, all the viewers who posted on my KPRC Facebook page, because mm -hmm. I posted about this yesterday. Right. People are obsessed with it, right? Uh -huh. And there's sort of this code that once you figure out the day's Wordle, you don't share it with other people. Oh, Because then you wow. blow their chance to play oh, the Oh, of course. Yeah, well, why, you wouldn't want to ruin it for everyone you else. You don't want to blow yeah. the surprise. Of course not. Okay. Hey, if you're looking for a side gig, uh, Domino's, they're about to start tipping customers. Usually it works the other way yeah, around. Uh, that's interesting. For picking up their own pizzas. This is happening online now through nearly the end of May, May 22nd, 2022. So what happens is because of this national labor shortage, Keith, mm -hmm. You know this. People are having a really hard time finding employees right. to do their jobs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now, if you go in and you place the order, you pick it up online. They're actually going to tip you three bucks. You can use it on a future order. Wow. Okay. I might extra. I might order some extra pizzas now. Right. Having that incentive. What do you think? That, that's that's pretty smart. That's actually a really smart uh, idea. And you know, it helps it helps everyone out. Helps you out. And it keeps people you know coming in to order those pizzas. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I feel like smart these are idea. really unprecedented times too. Yeah. I mean, growing up, you always hear about the un unemployment rate kind of going up. Up and down. I don't ever remember a time when employers were begging people to exactly. come work yeah. for them. Doesn't happen that often, doesn't that? But uh, a lot of jobs out there. So if you want to work, there are jobs. You just you know you want to find the, the right one for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, three bucks. Very interesting. Maybe not enough for a job, but, you know. <laughs> it adds but up. If right? you like pizza, it's going to work out. It's good news. Yes. It's good uh -huh. news all around. Well, listen, my sweater brother. Yes. <laughs> let's keep the show going. Twinning. Yes. Twinning. Love it. Twinning. Twinning is winning. We both got the memo. That's Still to right. come on Houston Life. First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes a, oh, wait a minute, mm. not so fast. How one matchmaker is going against social norms to get what she wants. Yeah, life. yeah, this is different. I love this story. For now, let's check in with Lauren Kelly, who is checking out the first mobile dog gym in the city of Houston. Aww. Hey, Lauren. You guys, I have really made some new friends today. You're not going to believe this. It is Run Final Run, the very first mobile dog gym. We are standing in it right now. How these guys are getting their exercise regardless of whether it's hot, freezing, or raining outside. More on that when Houston Life returns. Go Final Run! Run Final Run! Go, go, go! Okay, match 
matchmaker, matchmaker. Yeah. There is a professional matchmaker. Her name is Rachel Russo. Yeah. So at 35 years old, she essentially ended her relationship, mm -hmm. the guy she'd been with for a while. Right. He had a couple kids. He didn't want any more. But she did. Yeah, she's like, if we're, if we're, if I want to get married, I want to have kids, and if you don't want to have any more, I got to move on. Right. Yeah. But instead of waiting to find a new partner, mm -hmm. what did she do? She essentially found a sperm donor, and she got pregnant and started a family on her own. Solo parenting, as it's known, she prioritized what she wanted in life, and by the time her daughter was six weeks old, she was already receiving messages from interested. Men, yeah. what do you think about this, Keith? I mean, she took the bull by the horns, you know. She said, "Yeah, this is what I want. I'm gonna go ahead and you know get started." Yeah. And it, you know, th there are, I mean, plenty of people out there, you know, who 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 want babies and want kids, and guys obviously who want them as well. And I guess they said, "Hey, she's she. This is what she wants. I, I like that, and I want a family one day." So she's getting it started. Let's get going. Yeah. I, listen, I have a, a dear, dear friend who very intentionally did the same thing. She she def desperately wanted to be a mom. Uh -huh. She didn't find the right partner, and so she went. We, she went it alone, yeah. and it's worked out phenomenally for her. Yeah. So you and Lisa, then, yes. you have four girls, mm -hmm. and you were telling me <laughs> during the break that you both had the kids' conversation early on. So you were on the same page. There were no surprises here. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, you know you, when you're dating, you get to that point, well, you know, I like you. I really like you enough to, I think, to one ha they have a family. So what do you think about kids? And so we both wanted six kids, both of us. And we both wanted exactly four girls and two boys. That's a large number to start with. Uh, yeah, I no, mean, by many standards. Yeah, oh yeah, right? especially today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, and, and then so I wanted I I wanted four girls and two boys, but I wanted the boys first because I wanted to have have backup when the when the when the guys started coming knocking on the, the door. Older the older brothers. To, you yes. Know, yeah. I, you know. Keep it, an eye it, out. If anyone remembers the uh, the uh, Martin Lawrence and uh, Will Smith scene. <laughs> that's what you envisioned. <laughs> that, that's you. what I envisioned. Me and my two boys meeting those young men at the door and say, Hey, come on <laughs> hey, in. Tell, yes. Tell us about yourselves, boys. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yes. But, uh, yeah, yeah, so we, we did. We both wanted a big family. And, but then we got the four girls, and, uh, you know, we saw <laughs> we saw what it took to, to raise a family and how much it cost, especially. With, so we were like, you know, I think four is good. We're done. I think mom and dad anymore. are tired. Exactly, yes. yes. Yeah, we need a break, yeah. Four is a handful. <laughs> well, th listen, you're about to become empty nesters, so yeah. maybe those final two kids will show up one day. Uh, well, uh, I think we're kind of out of that line of work now. <laughs> so, yeah, we, 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 we raised them, we, we got them moving, and now it's time for uh, empty nesting, yes, for Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. Well, why don't we bring in Mr. Joe Sam now yeah. with today's question of the day. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it, guys. We want to hear from you. What's the most surprising thing you find attractive? We already have some great responses coming in. Let's take a look. Courtney Savala, our very own, she writes in, a negative COVID oh. test. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Crossing our fingers for yeah, that. Yeah, we're like going to keep you in our yeah. prayers, Courtney, for that. Mindy writes in, face has just enough wrinkles to look disgusted. Hmm. Oh, distinguished. 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 Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. Understand that, Mindy. Coming in, Julie writes in, not really surprising, but dad bods on a healthy fella, not overly obese, with crazy diets or gym, but active. Hey, I like a dad bod. Yeah. That's why I rock one. They're coming yeah. back in style, huh? <laughs> I've started to develop one over the last couple of months. <laughs> no shame in that. No, no shame in that. No, no, no. We got to get you guys back in the gym. I, I'm happy the way I am, Joe, but thank you. <laughs> All right, you guys. We want you to head over to our Houston Life Facebook page. Join that conversation. We'll share more of your comments a little later on in the show. Of course, we're still praying for Courtney. We wanted to come back yeah. soon, but we love having you here, Keith. Always a joy to be here. Yeah, <laughs> love, love my Houston Life family. Yeah, for sure. All right. Thanks, Joe. No problem. Okay. All right. We all know that Houston can have extreme weather from freezing cold and wet to very, very hot and humid. Uh, pets sensitive to the heat as well, but also sensitive to the cold, uh, just as we are. They certainly are. Well, Run Fido Run is Houston's first climate-controlled, safe, mobile dog gym. Lauren Kelly is giving us a look inside this afternoon. And Lauren, from what we can see, the dogs seem to really love it. Hey, this is something that your dog is going to be so super grateful for because think about it when the, the cement gets really hot and you take your dogs for a walk, the paw pads, they get really hot too. You got to keep that in mind. So a mobile gym, this is exactly what they need to get in on. Run Fido Run. I'm here with the founder and the owner. This is Michael Kaminsky. Thank you so uh, much for coming out and showing us just exactly how this mobile gym works. Most definitely. Most so definitely. first of all, I want you to tell everybody how you came up with the concept. So, being an animal lover and working with uh, rescues for a long time, um, I know that there's a need. Houston's so hot. Yeah. And it's very humid. It's not fair for uh, our dogs. Um, the dogs have a lot for them, so they can uh, pretty much overheat and uh, suffer heat exhaustion pretty quickly. 
So I came up with the idea to have a mobile dog gym in a climate controlled environment. In so they're running on the treadmills in there and it's staying nice and cool the whole time. Uh -huh. Exactly. How long exactly. did they run for? They run for 30 minutes. Okay. Because some, so, you know, some dogs are bigger and smaller. Let's let's go ahead and take a look oh inside and see. We've got we've got actually Fido in here and we've got Superstar Tex Man. He's ready to go. He's not really feeling the treadmill. He's not feeling the exercise today. But but Michael, why don't you tell us what those guys how long have they been running? So maybe about 10 minutes for now? They've been running about 10 minutes right now, and everything is controlled by the dog. So nothing is forced. There's not a motor, so if they wanted to stop, they can stop. They can definitely stop. They can go at whatever pace that they like. If they want to go out for a full out run, they can do full out run. If they want walk or trot, they can do that. But the main thing is, it's all climate control. Yeah. I keep it 60 degrees inside the room. Nice and cool. So let's yeah. really quickly, why is it so super important for, for dogs to really get out there and get their exercise? Because walking is not really sufficient for a dog. The dog has four legs. So when we take a dog for a walk, we usually go maybe two blocks, three blocks, four blocks at the most. Right. And for them, it's really not strenuous enough. Okay. And what you want to do is you want to give them some real exercise, and it also helps you with a uh, weight loss. I mean, look at the smiles on their faces, right? Oh, yeah. Michael, don't go anywhere. We're going to talk about your very special connection with Houston Pets Alive and how some of these dogs need forever home. So that'll be a little bit later on in the show. I'm going to see if I can get Tex Man on that treadmill, but uh, by the looks of things, it looks like exercise is not happening for him right now. Derek and Keith, back to you guys in studio. <laughs> I, think, I think Tex is like, I'm in a, a supervisor role today, okay? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to watch the other look pooches. <laughs> Oh, there he is. He's in management. <laughs> it's like Texas finding this very relaxing, Lauren. Texas, we'll like, give, me a, give me a daiquiri. Get me out of here. <laughs> yeah, he's chilling in the air conditioning, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, we'll see you in uh, just a little while. Well, Keith, I believe you have a newscast to get ready yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. the telephone booth handy still? It's, it's, it's right around the corner. Yeah, we're waiting for you to jump in any day. You know, you said you have, haven't had access yet. But uh, it's ready Keith, for you. Uh, it cannot unlock the door, but somehow. <laughs> Keith walks in and he comes out a second later looking like Superman. Suited up. Okay. Well, <laughs> always, always fun. Always fun to be here. Thanks for stopping by, Keith. My pleasure. We'll see you on the news at 4 o'clock. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Still to come on Houston Life, February is Heart Health Awareness Month. Find out how simply wearing red this Friday can help give back. And later, from Rockets games to Lunar New Year celebrations around H-Town, meet the group bringing lion dancing to Houston for nearly 30 years. It's incredible. You don't want to miss it. Houston Life will be right back. Did you know cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of women, which is why raising awareness about heart disease is so critical. Here with more on how we can help by simply wearing red is Senior Vice President with the American Heart Association, Mel Edwards. Mel, we always love having you on Houston Life. Thank you so much. The statistics really are shocking. Nearly 70% of adult women in the U.S. are overweight or obese. Uh, simple exercise can help, but it is the number one killer of women cardiovascular disease. It is. So, and a statistic that we use is one in three. So one in three women will die of cardiovascular disease. So when I take a look at my mother and my daughter and myself, I'm like, okay, one in three is one of us. It's right. So, scary. so I keep saying, don't be a one in three. And we were saying during commercial break that women are actually less likely to receive bystander CPR in case of a medical emergency. Yes, so this is about 34% chance that you will actually receive bystander CPR. A lot of times people don't realize that bystander CPR really is hands-only CPR. And not to date myself, but I learned on an Annie and it was mouth to mouth. Mm -hmm. I did too, I did too. So, all right, so I know you're younger than me, so now I don't feel so bad. So thank you for that, but it is. Um, so it's all about the compressions, but most people are a little more intimidated to approach a woman um, simply because we're genetically different. Different body parts. Different body parts. So let's talk about some of the goals throughout the month because obviously we talk about this month and raising awareness is so critical. You hope that this, this awareness really lasts throughout the entire year. Absolutely. So it's a 365 day awareness, but the first Friday of every February is National Wear Red Day. So it is Wear Go Red. Um, we have free resources on the American Heart Association website. You can share with your family. So it's Wear Red and Give. 
Well, and, and the common goal here, as people are wearing red and w raising awareness, the eradication of heart disease and also stroke. I mean, which is also, that's the number five killer of Americans. Correct. And of course, staying at home as during the pandemic, it's only increased. So of course, we are looking at mental health issues. We're not being able to get out, maybe not going to the gym, trying to find new creative ways to monitor your numbers. That's blood pressure, cholesterol, your BMI. Um, so knowing those are really critical in knowing whether or not you're at risk for cardiovascular disease. A lot of us, Mel, we might think of our parents, of our grandparents. The statistics actually show that even people over the age of 20 have a very high percentage of having some form of cardiovascular disease. It's very shocking. So again, that when you're young, you think you're invincible, but you're not. So it's knowing your family history. It's talking about that with your doctor. It's returning to your doctor. Even during COVID times, it's going back to your doctor and making sure that you're staying in check. Also, new data, I, I see here that Gen Z and millennial women, because mm -hmm. again, women are disproportionately affected, that they are maybe less likely to know that they could be at risk. But again, nearly half of women over the age of 20 are at risk. They are at risk, and we know that you can be very young and in your 20s and have a stroke. Um, we have a, a survivor story that we're focusing on our heart ball uh, next Saturday, and she was 24 years old um, and she had a stroke. So it doesn't matter your age, you're not invincible, and you need to know so that you're not a one in three. Wow, that's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And of course, knowledge is power. Let's talk about starting this conversation, Mel, because a lot of people are very uncomfortable. They don't want to bring up, you know, they don't want to ruin the holidays with family or with mom or grandma. How do you suggest we bring up these conversations to let those in our lives know we really care about their health and well-being? Well, one, it's being really transparent and being vulnerable, right? So when we talk about mental health and we talk about that connection, it's being vulnerable. For instance, my daughter didn't realize that my mother has had hypertension since she was 25 years old. Which is high blood pressure, correct? High blood pressure. So she was like, wow, Nana, I, I didn't know that. So you started at 25, so maybe I need to take a look at myself because now I'm 25. So it's doing it not from, I want you to be worried about me, but I want you to know so that you can be empowered so that you can take care of yourself. Yeah, and it's genetics. A it's, a, it's a gift, right? Yes. And that's a great way to look at it. And genetics do play a role, correct? They do. Okay, uh, let's talk just as a recap to wear red this Friday. So this is Friday, February 4th. People can wear red. Where can they get one of these nifty pins like the one I'm wearing right now? You can go to wearredday.org or you can go to heart.org. Also, you'll, you can get a pen, but you can also have free resources that you can share with your family members, and, um, and then you can also make a gift to That's, support the American Heart Association. Of course, that is fantastic. Thanks Thank for you. spreading the word, Mel Edwards, and hopefully we've inspired some of our viewers to spread the word as well. Thank you so much, and thank you for the support. Yes, always, always. Great to see you. And if you would like more information on this Friday's National Wear Red Day to give back, again, you can visit wearredday.org. Now let's check in with Joe Sam, who has a story to help us kick off Black History Month. Hi, Joe. Hey, Derek. Yeah, coming up, it's been renovated, but still rich with history. I'll tell you more about the African American Library at Gregory School. And of course, we'll get a check of what's coming up for the news at four, including a look at some more winter weather heading our way. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Life. Derek Shore here along with Joe Sam now, 3.30 on the dot. Yeah, we're going to be getting to more of those responses for the question of the day. We asked you earlier, what's the most surprising thing you find attractive? More people are commenting on it on our Facebook page. Lynn says she writes right now, my husband's beard. He looks so handsome and distinguished. I find it very attractive, but I hate kissing him because I don't like how it feels. Oh. But it's great to look at. Well, lucky <laughs> husband because Brandon <laughs> hates the way mine looks and feels. I love so a good beard. Beard. Hey. You got one for two. That's a good one. Uh, Monet writes in a cold, rainy day. You know, I do too. There's something kind of cozy and romantic about the I rain. do love a good, cozy, rainy day. And William writes in a well kept house plant or cactus in the bathroom. Derek, you got a lot of plants too, so I know you love the plants all over. Yeah, but I'm curious, William, why in the bathroom? <laughs> right. Like, why specifically in the bathroom? But uh, I'll give you that one. Gina writes in a bald like slick bald wait a bald head, head. Oh, God, yes got it oh she said it's sexy a bald head 
Yes, like slick bald, so sexy. I think I think Ooh. bald is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, I do yeah, like you got bald. And you're not the only one. We, our, our corrector, Chris Her or director, Chris Herring. Yeah, he keeps rubbing it on down. And I love how the back row is all pointing at him. That's right. That's right. Point him out. We you got to make Chris. sure it's smooth, that it's nice and shaved the day of. By the way, uh, Chris is married, so please don't email <laughs> Stay me. Away. He is not available. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you say? Oh, man. Sorry, Chris. Blew your cover. Why don't we check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look at what's coming up at 4 o'clock. Keith, Hi, I think you got to get that bald head. You I and know, Frank. man. Gosh, you know, I, I mean, I, I got the beard, but maybe I, gotta, maybe I should go with the shave. I don't know. Goodness, I'm, I'm getting jealous now. Here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I don't know what. I'm trying to think of something I'm surprised. Um, I guess not not mine, per se, but I, I am surprised that I, I like my beard. As much as, as I as I as I do. Well, I'm glad someone. Does. <laughs> I know because Lisa someone said the same thing. To say it. Yeah, I mean because because no. Lisa's kind of the same thing as the one lady says. Like you know, okay, it looks okay, but I don't like the way it feels. I'm like, yeah. it feels good on my face. Oh, <laughs> That's I mean, like right. I look good, so. <laughs> it feels good to me. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, but bald head that, that might be next. I don't know. We'll see. For me, it's more of like a, a trait where I, I'm really impressed by people that can do fast math in their head. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man. I, like it's smart, not, it's not like smart it's is sexy, but it's right? Like, it's just wow. Like I wish I could do that because I can't. Well, I love Wordle. I didn't know how much I was going to oh love Wordle. Oh my gosh! Wordle. Isn't it great? <laughs> it's great. I did no. really well today on it. Is it. The New York Times just bought it for like. I know. So yeah. We were talking about that. Yeah, we're a while ago. Obsessed I, with it, Keith. I'm telling you, you will be a convert. I'm, you okay. got to give it a Wordle. Got to make it happen. I'm, you got to give it a Wordle. <laughs> I, I, I plan on checking well, it out today for sure. Yeah, I had no, I had no idea. I had no so idea. So good. <laughs> You're gonna love it. I know. Uh, I just started with Frank, and I'm, I'm kind of hooked. Yep. Yep. Okay. I don't know if we are in love with Arctic Blast, though. I mean, Arctic oh, Blast, yeah. the, that term sounds painful. Yeah. That's brewing, right? Arctic it is hurts. too many letters for Wordle. <laughs> sunny yes. is a good, sunny is a good word, a letter we go. for, we like that word. Okay, but it's gotten a little better today. You can see the ceilings have lifted, the sky has lifted a little bit, so we're getting some little breaks of sunshine. Temperatures all the way to 69, Sugar Land, Lake Jackson, 65 in Houston, 66 in Brenham. But look to the north, teens, where you would expect them up in the Rocky Mountains. Mountains, Minneapolis 16, 45 now in Wichita, 59 in St. Louis. This is the Arctic air that's going to be blasting in here. And as it does that, that's going to shake up the state, as you can imagine. Watches and warnings, all that you see here in the pinks and the blues, all the way into the Dallas area. These are winter storm watches and winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories. The bottom line is winter is on the way for Texas. So how does that affect us? Let me show you the future cast. And you can see that generally tomorrow is a lot like today. We'll see warm weather and start to see some rain by evening, 8, 9, 10 o'clock. So we see some rain ahead of this. Behind this front, you can see a mix of sleet and freezing rain and snow, and then all snow up in Oklahoma. So that's 10 o'clock Wednesday. And then as we go right on into Thursday, you start to see a little more of this mixture of wintry weather come towards southeast Texas at 11 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. We're still, we are still going to be fairly warm from Wednesday's 70s. So it will be hard to get any of that to really stick. Now this is 9 o'clock Thursday. Thursday evening, and there's this little line of winter weather that wants to hang in here as we go into Friday morning. And I'll zip down here a little bit, and you can see that 6 a.m. Friday, maybe we get a little bit of winter weather out of this. Sleet would probably be it. We, right now, we have no winter watches or advisories for our part of Texas, but it's still four days away, so I mean, it's not like it's tomorrow. Uh, the models are still going to have to hone in on this. What I can tell you is it's really going to get cold around here. Generally speaking, Friday morning morning and Saturday morning we're in the 20s. You can see all day Thursday only in the 40s after Groundhog Day in the 70s. So we're really going to drop Thursday and then we're below freezing uh, as we go into Friday and Saturday. And if you're north and west, Huntsville College Station, Conroe, Brenham, you're going to get even colder, like 20, 21 degrees, a hard freeze as we go into Friday and Saturday. So get ready for that. We'll talk a lot more about it coming up at 4 o'clock. The winter weather, the lows for your specific area, and this is always the big question, how long will it be freezing each night? And I have that graph for you as well, as, uh, especially for gardeners and people who don't want to protect plants. Is it yeah. going to be freezing for an hour? Or is it going to be freezing for 10 hours? Makes a big difference. So mm. we'll right. have that for you at 4 o'clock. Okay. We appreciate that, Frank. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Right. And of course, that leads us into some of our other stories we're covering for you this afternoon. Governor Greg Abbott trying to reassure Texans that the lights will stay on when wintry weather hits the state in the coming days, as Frank just mentioned. Why the governor is so 
so confident on the integrity of the state's power grid this time. Plus, final farewells today for Precinct 5 Constable Corporal Charles Galloway. He was shot and killed during a traffic stop in southwest Houston last month. We will recap some of the most impactful moments from the service. And in our Ask Amy segment today, investigator Amy Davis takes a closer look at the apps you're using on your smartphone. A warning about how thieves are using the app store to get your personal information and how you can protect yourself. So always good information there, guys. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully they're not trying to steal anything on the Wordle app because no. Wordle app mm. is coming up for me. Yeah. yeah. And Wordle <laughs> is six letters. It I, is? Yeah, that, that, that didn't make any sense. A five-letter game for a six-letter puzzle. Well, but there are six different columns. There are six oh, different that rows, yeah. though. That's there why. Yeah, go. five letters, six rows. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You well, learn, I don't we know where you learned that. Day. How'd you hear that? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, look at it. Six, six you rows. You know, that, it, those kind of trivia things are so attractive. <laughs> See? See? High tech. You're Hi, married buddy. too, Frank. We gotta leave it there. Right. Yeah, he had a party there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Shifting gears now. So we're gonna start off Black History Month learning more about the significance of the African American Library at the Gregory School, which is a branch of the Houston Public Library System in Fourth Ward. Yeah, absolutely. In 1870, it served as the first learning Houston institution for freed slaves. And I found out how it's being repurposed today after an eleven million dollar renovation from the Federal Community Development Blocks Grant in 2008. The building is now being used as a research archive that tells the real stories of African Americans, specifically those that live right here in Houston. So my name is Miguel Cesar. I'm the manager here at the African American Library at the Gregory School. According to Miguel, you won't find books spread throughout the library's hall. Instead, history covers the walls of the Gregory School. It's the first official education uh, center for newly emancipated children after slavery. As the first library of its kind in Houston and one of the few African-American libraries in the country, the Gregory School serves as a resource to preserve, promote, and celebrate the rich history and culture of African-Americans. We are a collecting institution, which means we go out to the public to collect uh, archives. So we collect documents, photographs, uh, memoirs, uh, things that document everyday life in Houston uh, related to African American history. Why is that important? Well, for years, people of all color have been wanting a place they can go to learn about black history, where without it, this country wouldn't have progressed in the way it has. In the past, African American history just wasn't documented very well by the dominant culture of that time. So having institutions like these were able to um, collect original documents, uh, primary sources that tells the, the, the story, uh, the exact stories. The library features galleries, an oral history recording room, and reading rooms where you can educate yourself, something Miguel is happy to offer. We need people of your community, of your heritage, of your culture, to be in these institutions to kind of give that extra insight. Um, what's been lacking for so long, so I, I'm very, honored and happy because it's not that many African-American archivist managers in the, uh, in the in this field so very very happy very proud to be here definitely a proud moment now tomorrow evening they'll kick off their month of events with the legacy of a black tobacco former Henrietta Lacks at 630 now for more information about that I'll have a link on our website HoustonLife.tv and digging a little bit more into the history of it it was named after Edgar M Gregory who was a Union officer for the American Civil War back in the 1800s. He also was very significant, Derek, in freeing a lot of people from slavery. So they named the library, the school after him, which is incredible. Yeah, it's lovely. And it looks like the renovation is beautiful. Oh. I mean, a perfect home for this collection. Also, Joe, you do have a follow up on a story you covered for us recently. Yes, it is so great. And I'm so excited to tell everyone. Now, you might recall the story of 10 year old Devorge Daniel. He's the cancer fighter on a journey to be sworn in by 100 law enforcement agencies. Well, guess Guess what, guys? Not only did he reach his 100 mark, but he surpassed it. He was sworn in simultaneously by 25 agencies in Conroe yesterday, and another ceremony was held later on by HISD police, bringing his total now brand new to 113. So good for him. I'm so happy for him. And we have a full article for you guys to check that out on clicktohouston.com. Go and make sure you do so. I actually spoke to his dad earlier today, 
Theotis, and he said that they're going to keep going. They are excited about what's happened. He said that Devorazio was just so thrilled and so overwhelmed that he just couldn't even take it all in. And you know what he did, right? What bust out laughing. You yeah, that I'm incredible sure. laugh that he has. That infectious <laughs> laugh. Well, and what's cool is our KPRC to anchor Christine Noel. She was mm -hmm. actually with him, broke the news to DeVarJ that oh. he had actually hit that 100 mark. So congratulations, DeVarJ. That really is great. We look forward to hearing more mm -hmm. of your jokes as well. <laughs> All right, Joe, thank you. Now let's check back in with Lauren Kelly, who's helping our pets stay safe and healthy in any kind of Houston weather. Hey, Lauren, how's it going? That's right. Run, Fido, Run is a mobile dog gym. And you guys, there's no motor on these. That is actually just the dogs going for it. I will tell you how this is a brilliant idea, especially to have in Houston. And Houston Life returns. Go, 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 go. is Houston's first mobile dog gym. And look, you guys are getting a view of it right now. That's Dutch on the right-hand side and Fido on the left. And you guys, I have to mention, everybody had a couple of questions. Michael Kaminsky, you are the owner and the founder. The, the treadmills that they're on, they're totally dog-friendly. They're actually made for dogs. There's no motor on them, There's correct? There's no motor at all. And these are actually specifically designed just for dogs. Okay. Dog treadmills have been around since before human treadmills. Right. And there's absolutely no way that they can injure themselves on the treadmill because nothing's forced. And this is so great. Houston weather is very fickle. It's back and forth. This is a perfect way to get your dogs the exercise that they need no matter what the climate. Come here. I, I do want to mention we've got some fun news. What really is great about this business is that you work with Houston Pets Alive and you run a lot of their kennel dogs. I do. And this little guy right here, this is Dutch. He is up for adoption and we've been trying to find him a forever home and he is a very rare breed. What kind of breed is he? I can. K A I. -N. Okay. K -A -N. Okay. okay. And it's a Japanese dog. And they're very loyal. They're uh, good with families, good with children, and good with other dogs. And look at this smile. He loves to run. He'll go, he'll go get all the things for you out of the kitchen. Maybe if you need a, a cold, refreshing drink. Well, Dutch, we love you. Fido, thanks for hanging out. Michael, thanks for bringing the Run, Fido, Run mobile gym right here to the Houston Life parking lot is where we're at. I'm going to put all the details up on this little guy, HoustonLife.tv. Back to you in studio, Derek. Okay, Lauren. <laughs> Derek in Texas there. Say hi. <laughs> Just for the record, uh, Tex really loved it out there, but he's, he's enjoying relaxing on the sofa with me, too. Good job. You know, Tex just isn't the exercise type, and that's fine. Well, he's not, totally not okay today. by just not being today. a chill dog. <laughs> okay, give those pups a treat okay. for us, Lauren. Thank you so much. We will. We sure will. Coming up after the break, we are kicking off the year of the Tiger with a performance by local dance troupe Lee's Golden Dragon. You do not want to miss it. For now, though, here's Nichelle Turner for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hey, Nichelle. Derek, tune in to ET tonight for our Uncharted exclusive with Mark Wahlberg and Tom Holland. These two are hilarious together, and you have to see their incredible stunts. That's tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC2. Now, don't go anywhere. Houston Life will be right back. Welcome back to Houston Life. The Lunar New Year holiday starts today. It is one of the busiest times of year for a local group that's considered the go-to group for lion dancing in Houston. They've had that title for nearly 50 years. They are Lee's Golden Dragon, and they are standing by to perform for us live. But first, the group's director, Dr. Alan Lee, is here as we welcome the Year of the Tiger. Welcome, Dr. Lee, to Houston Life. Oh, thank you. It is so nice to see you, and uh, it's been great chatting with you during commercial break. This is really fascinating. We'll have a little more on Lunar New Year in just a bit. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this group, though. 1974 was the year that this group was formed. You've been involved for a long time, and you were telling me that certifying as an instructor was more intense than your dental boards? <laughs> yes, yes, to get my uh, international judgeship certified by the International Lion and Dragon Dance Federation, which is known, recognized worldwide. What do you think it is about your group that sets it apart, that makes it the best in Houston? Well, uh, I hope we are, and if you say we are, okay, that's fine with me. Uh, well, you know, we, 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 we're the innovator, we, 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 we do things and start new projects, new innovations, and some, some of the other people follow us. 
Well, it's it's incredible watching some video right now of your performances. I know you're the official uh, performers for the Houston Rockets. Yes. You've performed for a number of presidents, uh, Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton, George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, even celebrities, and you were hired by Walt Disney Productions. Oh, was that Yao Ming, I, I believe, a photo just now? <laughs> yes. That yes. is super cool. Uh, you also were hired by Disney to perform for the premiere of Mulan in China, Texas. Yes. Yes. At first they said, you're going to perform in China. I looked at them twice. China, China Texas. Texas. Yes. Which I, I did not realize was even a thing. Uh, I believe that was Prince Charles. There, of course, is Governor Abbott. Yes. There's Mayor Turner. Mm -hmm. So the list goes on and on. Dignitary celebrities where you've performed. This group works really, really hard. Is it the full-time job for the performers? Well, uh, most of us have other jobs. And uh, they devote a lot of time being very dedicated, so they spend a lot of time. So it's almost full time that they're spending, even though it's part time. You were telling me that you had performances this morning, mm -hmm. and now you're doing Houston Life. Yes. And then for the rest of the day, you have a stacked lineup of performances. Yes, we do. Okay, yes, we do. so essentially every time you're performing, do those performances serve as your rehearsals, or are you also meeting to rehearse and oh, go over everything? Oh, definitely we have uh, time to practice regularly. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's colorful, it's festive. Anyone is invited to participate in, yes. in these, right? Yes, everyone is welcome. Let's talk a little bit about the Lunar New Year and the Year of the Tiger. So this is, of course, a multi-day holiday. It's celebrated in Asian countries all around the world, Vietnam, Tibet, China, Korea, Singapore, Mongolia. So how can, how can everyone get involved uh, in celebrating the Lunar New Year? And tell us a little bit about the Year of the Tiger, the significance of the Tiger. Well, there's festivals, festivities, activities. Anybody can join, just find out where they are, and you can come and have fun. Uh, the, the New Year's uh, Year of the the uh, tiger if you if I tell you this one thing you'll know more than 99% of the public okay that year on the Chinese calendar is 4720 you know ours is 2022 theirs is 4720 year of the tiger and a lot of people don't know the 4720 4720 yes like 4720 in the future no, for, so, yes, it's been around, uh, the civilization's been around 4,000 years. For that long, yes. my yes. goodness. Well, Dr. Alan Lee, uh, we're so excited to watch your group perform. Thanks for all your work mm -hmm. in the community, and it's great to meet you in person. I was dying to meet you, too. That you're, is you're it. You're wonderful, my favorite. That is very nice of you to say. We're so glad to have you here, and we're about to be treated to a lovely performance, so sit tight. In the meantime, if you'd like to connect with the group, you can visit the Scene on Houston Life section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. Okay, we're not going to keep you waiting anymore. Let's give it up for Lee's Golden Dragon. They are in the KPRC lobby right now with a lion dance performance to celebrate the Lunar New Year. Take it away. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, details on the popular Tapas on the Trails event happening next weekend at the Houston Arboretum and Nature Center. Plus, she made it all the way to season 19 finale and is headed to the New York Fashion Week. We're chatting with Houston designer Chastity Serial hours before she could become the winner of Bravo's Project Runway. Chastity Serial is so talented. We are rooting for you, Chastity, every step of the way. We always love highlighting our mm -hmm. local talent and seeing them do so well. 
on the national stage. So uh, that does it for Houston Life today, Joe. I'm so excited to see this here. This is going to be great for her because I watch Project Runway. Like, <laughs> it's, it's one of my favorite shows. So I can't wait to see a Houston native win it. Yeah, it's good stuff. We're going to put that out there, right? Uh, yeah. Also, thanks to all of our viewers for your comments to today's question of the day. There were some really good ones. Mm -hmm. And the spelling and grammar comment from Kim. Kim, I am right there with you. <laughs> Appreciate that one. So uh, thanks for spending part of your afternoon with us. We're going to hand it on over to Keith and Christine in Studio A. You guys, that performance a few minutes ago was incredible. Yes. Yeah. Seriously. I know. It really it is incredible. And robust. Consider this. I mean, that's one of like a dozen performances yeah. today. So those guys, they keep the energy up. I love it. Gotta hand it to well, them. Thank you for sharing that with us, you guys. Yeah. And we'll yeah. see you tomorrow in Houston Life. Sounds good.